Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve day nine of the JavaScript challenge, Memoys. Whoever said dynamic programming wouldn't come in handy. And this is probably my favorite one of the challenge so far. A lot we can learn here. It's similar to the last problem where we have a wrapper function for our inner function over here. And we only want this function that we pass in as a parameter, we will pass this in. We only want it to be executed a single time, at least with the exact same parameter. So here, let's take a look at the example. We're calling memoys, passing in this function that just adds two numbers together and returns them. The first time we call it, it returns five. The second time we call it, it also returns five. But actually the second time we called it, the function, at least this part, did not execute this entire part. And we know that because our call count variable was only incremented a single time. So that's kind of the behavior we want to add. And I think the editorial in this problem is really good. So quickly, let's skim through that before we solve the problem. First, they tell us that this is memoization, which is really just a fancy word for caching. We are caching the result of sub problems so that we don't have to repeat work. Of course, this is a technique applied in dynamic programming if you're familiar with that, but it's a technique that's used in other places as well. Firstly, they make a quick mention of pure functions, which are just functions that given the same input will always return the same output. Well, adding two numbers is definitely a pure function, but what's not a pure function is getting the current date at any given point in time. If we get the date right now, it's roughly 6 p.m. where I'm at. But if we get the date an hour later, it might be 7 p.m. Clearly, this is not a pure function. So it doesn't make any sense to apply caching to a non-pure function. But technically, we still do sometimes apply caching to non-pure functions. Like sometimes your browser will cache certain images and things like that, even though that data is stale. And you know, sometimes this can create buggy behavior. That's kind of why the first thing you'll want to do when you have issues with your browser is clear your cache. But let's continue skimming. They mention exactly that, that caching website files like images, JavaScript files, CSS, things like that. React components are also an example of pure functions. I wouldn't know because I use Angular, a grown man's framework. Just kidding, I really hate it. But the reason React uses pure functions is that they create a good level of abstraction. You don't really have to understand a lot about the inner workings of a component. You can expect that given the same input, it will return the same template, which will then be rendered to the user. Caching API calls is another common example, just like caching images, of course. Sometimes reading from a database can be expensive. So sometimes you create a copy of that data and put it in something like Redis, which is usually in memory. And finally, we arrive at dynamic programming. Yes, recursive dynamic programming does make use of caching or memoization. And continuing, this is the part I probably won't talk about today because I expect that we will solve memoys too, where we can probably discuss this stuff further. So now let's finally actually get into the solution of the problem. It's gonna be similar to yesterday where we do have this wrapper function. And the purpose of this wrapper function is that we can actually add state to this inner function. We are creating a function that we're gonna pass into memoys, just like in this example down here. Maybe our function adds two numbers together. But for us to know that this function has already been called, we need to have some type of state that we maintain within memoys. So that state in our case, I'm gonna call it a cache and it's gonna be const because it's actually gonna be an object. Because remember, we are not only storing the result of one function call. We might call our function with two and three, but we might also call it with two and seven. Every unique parameter that we pass in, we want to cache the result of it so we don't have to recompute it in the future. So in this case, an object, AKA a hash map, is gonna be used for that in JavaScript. So then in our inner function that we're going to return, of course we wanna call our fn function given whatever arguments we pass in. They could be an arbitrary number of arguments. Remember this dot, dot, dot is important because not only could we pass two and three, but we could pass in two, three, and seven or eight. It allows us to pass in an arbitrary number of parameters. That's the significance of the dot, dot, dot. So we call our function with these parameters, but we only wanna call this function if we haven't called it before. How do we know if we've called it before? If the result is already stored in our cache. So how do we check that? Do we just use these arguments as a key in our cache? Can we just say is args in 
cache. No, we can't just do this because args here is an array, which is an object, which generally can't be the key of a hash map. Pretty much we can only use strings or numbers, but args is always an array. So what we do before we use this is we have to convert this into a string that we can use as the key for our hash map. So we say key is equal to json.stringify this args object. json.stringify takes an object, which in this case an array is also an object, and converts it into a string, which then we can use as a key in our hash map. So we check, is this key already inserted in our cache? If it is, we can simply say return the cache using this key. If it's not, then we would have to compute it like this, cache equals key, well, equals the function uh, return value, and then we return cache with this key inserted. And that's pretty much the entire code. Let me quickly run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does, but I'm not quite done yet. There are a couple important things to mention. Firstly, we've been using this pattern a lot lately, and I'm actually surprised that our code worked even though I had this uncommented, so I'll go ahead and comment it. The idea here is that we have this wrapper function that is going to add content or add functionality to whatever inner function that we pass in. And in this case, it's very general. All it's doing is caching the result of this function. This is an example of the decorator design pattern, or at least it's reminiscent of it because technically this is an object-oriented design pattern, but clearly here you can see we don't really have object-oriented programming going on, at least not in the traditional sense, but it's very reminiscent of object-oriented programming given the fact that we do have some hidden state here. So I wanted to mention that because a lot of people think they don't know any design patterns, but if you've been solving problems with me, you've actually been learning them as you've been going. And lastly, if this dot 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 arg stuff doesn't make 100% sense to you, how did we convert an object into a string? And especially, how can we be sure that this string is going to be unique just like the parameters? Well, let me quickly prove it to you. Suppose I have a function f which accepts an arbitrary number of args. The power, remember, of this function is we could call it with a one, we could call it with a one, two, we could call it with a one, two, three. Any of those would be valid. But what happens now when I take this args, which is an array, remember, and stringify it? What is it going to look like? Well, let's console log it and find out. So now I'm gonna run this and you can see it's one, two, three which is kind of what we expect. Args is an array, and once you convert it to a string, I guess this is what it's gonna look like, this string, one, two, three, and closing brace, or bracket. So we pretty much can be sure that if we pass in a unique combination of parameters, we will get a unique key, at least in the case where our parameters are integers, which I believe they mentioned in the problem that we are guaranteed that our inner function will be called only with integers. That's all I had. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.